We're good all the way around. Hello, everyone. This is Dr. Roger Paul, and tonight we're going to continue our study of the best book in the world. Guess what its name is? The Arantia Book, right? And we're on paper 48, and we're on your life, and boy, you're going to love this paper. It's got so much information. It's one of my very, very favorite papers. And let me move this right here by one. And it starts on page 541 of the original book, or it's paper 4801. So let's have a little prayer and we'll get started for the night. Lord, thank you for bringing us together tonight. Thank you for the information. Thank you, thank you, thank you. This is the best paper you gave us. <laughs> it tells where we're going to go, what we're going to happen, what's going to happen to us, and gives us some hope for the life after this life. We thank you. We give you the praise in your son, Michael Jesus of Nazareth. Amen. Amen. All right. Amen. Let's try this mute and unmute, dear. Unmute over there and I'll mute okay. this again. <clears throat> Just hope there'll be fried chicken. <laughs> <laughs> Excuse me. Okay. I have to do what? Okay. Oh, okay. Okay, good. Paper 48, The Marantia Life. The gods cannot, at least they do not, transform a creature of gross animal nature into a perfected spirit by some mysterious act of creative magic. When the creators desire to produce perfect beings, they do so by direct and original creation but they never undertake to convert animal origin and material creatures into beings of perfection in a single step. That certainly makes sense. <laughs> I love this, uh, uh, the very first sentence on there. Uh, <laughs> they do not transform <laughs> creatures of what? Gross animal nature, right? In the perfect spirits. That's a fantasy, you know? That'd be a nice thing to say. It's some mysterious mag magic act, and we go from being, hey, don't bite me, <laughs> from a gross animal like, oh, this, she bit you. like <laughs> this right here. Look at her. She's going crazy back here. Oh. Hey, hey, stop. You better come over here. <laughs> she heard you insulting us animals. Yeah, really. <laughs> I must be. She didn't have she enough stuff. Yeah. That gross. <laughs> she didn't like the gross animal. That's right. Right. So. Gee. She understands. English. She understood it, right? <laughs> they don't convert gross animals into perfect spirit beings. No way, no how. I don't care what anybody says. So if you die tonight and you wake up on the mansion world, you're not going to be some perfect being. Does that make sense? Okay. And me and Diane were just talking about this before we started, how she says, you know, when, when we get to the mansion world, you start your mirage life. And I said, in reality, you start your mirage life here. Did y'all realize that? With your soul? With, with your soul. soul. You got it, Rodney. Soon as you get that adjuster, your mirage life technically starts because of what? The divinity. Well, it's like an embryo, correct? It's like an embryo. Yeah. That's right. That's where you start your mirage life. Now, you still go, you still have to live your finite life all the way to completion, right? But the marantia, the act of collecting information and experience for the adjuster is from that very first moment the uh, adjuster arrives, okay? Mm. So from that moment on, your spiritual life has started, Okay. It's called the Marantia life because it's an in-between state. Now, it also goes, uh, goes on to tell us that when the creators desire to, they can create perfect beings, okay, uh, from the get-go. And what kind of beings would those types of beings be? Those would be, those would be more like a Melchizedek or a, the Angelic mm -hmm. core and that sort of thing, Okay but they can create perfect beings. But as far as animal origin creatures, and that means every single planet and all seven of the super universes, every planet that's got beings on it, evolving beings, 
are exactly like us. They start as gross animals and they develop over time and eventually they die and go to their mansion worlds. Okay. So the creators can create perfect beings in a single step, but normally they don't do that, do they? Anything that's evolutionary, anything that gets a thought adjuster, and that's an important point because yeah. these perfect beings do not have what? Thought thought they don't have thought adjusters. There's no need for them. Mm -hmm. Okay. So you, when you think about that, think of all the beings that are in paradise themselves. None of them have thought adjusters, right? Because they don't need them. They don't have that experiential part of their life. So if you think you're going to go from a gross being to bam, you're totally a spiritual mm. being, a marancha being, I got news for you. Not going to happen, right? Can y'all see this picture okay or not? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. This is a picture uh, that says from the time that I have a whole series of these pictures tonight. And the reason I did it this way years ago is I want to give you a concept of stepping through from being a finite being to being a spiritual being. Okay. Mm. And when, if you listen to this real close tonight and you gather all that information, you're going to have a good idea of what happens to you. Okay. So hey, let's start at the beginning here. From the, the time of leaving the material worlds until you were are constituted a first stage spirit on Salvington. What's a first stage spirit? That's someone that's ready to leave the local universe to go on the minor sector adventure in the super universe. Okay, so this is all the way up till you become a first stage spirit. And what are you until that point? You're Marancha being. Okay, mm -hmm. all the way through this. Okay, you will undergo just 570 separate and ascending Marancha changes. Eight of these occur in the system, 71 in the constellation and 491 during your so your sojourn on the spheres of Salvington. Oh. Okay. So you will go through 570 transformations. Now I want to break this down a little bit for you all so that you understand how important this is. The first eight of your transitions, what happens when you, when you wake up on the mansion world, that's your very first transition, is it not? You go from <laughs> being a human to what? A Marancha being, right? Okay. After you leave, when it's time for you to leave that very first mansion world, guess what happens? You are put to sleep for 10 days. Okay. People don't understand this. They think, well, they drop you off in the first mansion world. You get to roam around for 10 days. And if you don't fit, then, then they send you to the next one and then the next one and the next one. And that's what happens. But what people don't understand is at that 10 day period, when they decide you don't fit on this world anymore, what do they do? They put you to sleep. Okay. And they do this eight times from leaving the first mansion world all the way up to uh, Jerusalem. Now, why is this? Because the transition between the first mansion world and the second mansion world is a major <coughs> marancha and physical transformation. Okay. And it's just as important a transformation as it is from you going from a physical being to a marancha being. Okay, now why is that important? Because each and every world of those, the seven mansion worlds in Jerusalem have their own physical controllers that controls not only the world from the center. See, all these worlds are, are, are hollow. So from the center of that, the beings that can, we're going to talk about this a little bit later in this paper, but the beings that control the entire world, the entire mansion world, are all keyed 
for that Marantia experience of that one world. Okay? So when you go to a different world, you have to be tweaked or rekeyed so that you fit in on the new world. And why would that be? If you were not keyed and fit into the new world, when you got to the new world, many, many things of that world, like the food and the drink and, and everything else to your normal life, would not fit anymore. It wouldn't work anymore. The food you ate wouldn't work in your body. The, the water you drank wouldn't work in your body. Everything that you had gotten used to on that first world would no longer work on the second world. Does that make sense? Now, this sleep happens eight times, okay, for each mansion world. When you go from the mansion worlds to the constellations, which is um, 71 different times you go from world to world in the constellation. When you go from those worlds from world to world, you no longer have to be put to sleep to be keyed, okay? So think of it this way. If you take a key, uh, your regular keys that you get in the house, it will work on the first world, but when you go to the second world, the, the keys don't fit anymore. The, the, everything has to be recut for you. And that's what has to be done for each and every body, new body that you get. You use the same body, but it's modified so that you can use it over and over and over and over again. Now, what they're talking about here in this slide, these upgrades from world to world happen 570 times by the time you get all the way through Jerusalem and become a first stage spirit. Mm -hmm. So if you think about it, think about it this way. You remember how I'm always talking about how the finite reality is not the same as the Marantia reality, and the Marantia reality is not the same as the spiritual reality. Right, they superimpose each other. So think of it this way: when you are tweaked with each and every planet, you are retuned for what a new reality. So if you think about it, not only are you upgraded five hundred and seventy times, but you go through five hundred and seventy different realities by the time you hit the spiritual world that's that's a lot of that's difference. a lot of work <laughs> that's a lot of difference isn't it if you think about it so we're not sitting still let me go on to the next one here so y'all can see it we go over here this is a picture of adentia and the satellites that sat surrounds adentia okay and around Adentia, this is our constellation headquarters. Okay, so that's what Adentia is. Excuse me. Those have spheres. Huh? In each sphere in the circle has spheres around it. It does. And each one of these has 10 spheres. Remember, the mansion world has seven sphere, spheres oh, around right. them, right? All seven of them have seven spheres around here. When you get to the constell constellation, it's different, though. When you hit the constellation, they, each, each one of these spheres has 10 around it instead of seven. Lord. Okay. So this one right here, the, the, the spheres that surround Adentia. Now, let me explain this, too. When you look at this, they're not lined up like this. Okay. This is just so you can get an idea of how many worlds we're talking about. But the point is here, these, these worlds are all the way around Adentia, you know, different heights, different places. But this is how many there is for each one. And let me see if I can read this, if I can get close enough. The government of your constellation, can you read that, dear? is situated in a cluster of 771 architectural spheres. Well, I can't read the rest of that. At the very center is Adentia. Each one... Uh, 
I can't read the rest of it. Y'all can y'all can look that up both though, but each one of these spheres, the main sphere is like a hundred times the size of Urantia. Okay? Each one of these. And the satellites that surround each one of these spheres are about around the same size as Urantia. So think of it this way. This would be like our planet being a part of a circuit that surrounds a larger planet about the size of Jupiter, let's say, okay? mm -hmm. that has 10 more planets just exactly like ours. Okay? Oh. So that's a lot of planets. All right, you can download the slide and blow it up as big as you want to. Let me see if I can make this any bigger here. That way I can see it a little bit better. Okay. This is our local universe headquarters. And the local universe headquarters, okay, has sure. five or 490 worlds that surround it. Now, do you notice a disparity between the constellation and the local universe headquarters? So mm -hmm. if it's got 490 worlds and the constellation headquarters has 771 worlds and you add the eight worlds of the system, that's Adentia and the seven satellites and the mansion worlds, which is 56 worlds, that comes to 1,200 and something planets. Mm -hmm. Which is more than 570 trans 570 mm -hmm. times your transform. So, what does that mean to us? That means many of these worlds, once we're tweaked for one of them, might be good for a hundred of them. You see what I'm mm -hmm. saying? Yeah. I want to make sure you understand that because if, if you don't understand that, then you're going, where's all these extra worlds coming from? Okay. So this shows Salvington plus the 490 worlds that surround Salvington. And again, these aren't a perfect circle around the world like it's drawn. It's just done that way so you can see how many there are. And then there's 10 circuits that go around these. And each one of these circuits are used for different things, right? So you have the primary spheres and the trib tributary spheres that go around each one of these just like the other planets. And notice here, the very first one, the pilot world of Melchizedek, that's the world that we land on when we get our papers to go to Salvington the first time. And then we will trek through all of these different circuits and all of these worlds before we're done. Okay? So we'll be in the school for a long, long time. It'll take a couple of weeks. <laughs> and I wanted to give you all an idea of how huge we're talking about here, right? This is not a little bitty thing that happens. Okay, and this is another slide of the transformations. All right. On, on Salvington, you have 491 transformations on the local universe. Okay in the Marantia form. On Adentia, our constellation, you only have 71 transformations, okay? Even though there's 771 planets. Why would that be? Because when you get transformation for one, you would get transformation for 10 more, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera, right? And notice here it has the eight transformations for the Satania system, and these are the ones for the mansion worlds. Now, point in point is this. On all of these, you will go to sleep for 10 days and then wake up on a new world. Okay? On these, you will not go to sleep on and wake up on a new world any longer. Nor on these it, it itself. But when you leave Salvington, you will again go to sleep and wake up on the minor sector. And that happens again in the major sector in Uversa, Havona, and finally Paradise. Now, we know that the sleep from uh, Paradise is very, very long. It's a couple hundred thousand years before you wake up. Okay? 
because of the time it takes for the guardians, for the seraphim to transport you from Uversa to paradise. All right. Now, you said a couple of hundred thousand years? A couple hundred thousand years, yeah, to go from Havona to paradise. That's you got any idea why that would be? Well, it's such a distance, number one. It's a distance. It's the distance between Havona and the space it takes to transverse to get to paradise. It's not instantaneous, okay? So you were put to sleep so that you're comfortable, and I, I probably not your thought adjuster, but you're, you are put to sleep. So you're not conscious any longer. And then when you consciousize, you're on paradise. Now think of it this way. If your thought adjuster is aware, he has a couple hundred thousand dollars, a couple hundred thousand years <laughs> to work on you while you're asleep, doesn't he? <laughs> <laughs> so quite, quite a little kind of trip, journey. trip there, there. Okay. But I didn't want you to get the idea that you go to sleep for every one of these 491 or 470 transformations from from um, the mansion worlds to the system capital. I mean, the local universe capital. Okay? So that's that's the big picture. Does that help? Make yes. sense of a little, little bit? Thank you. All right. Let me pull this back down where it belongs. And let's see who's next. Uh, Rodney, I think you're up next. All right. Um, the Maranta life extending as it does over the various stages of the local universe career is the only possible approach whereby material mortals could attain the threshold of the spirit world. What magic, what magic to death, the natural dissolution of the material body, hold that such a simple step should instantly transform the mortal and material mind into an immor immoral mortal and perfected spirit. Such beliefs are but ignorant superstitions and pleasing fables. Okay, so it spells it out. Huh? I can understand that. It does. You know, as people believe that they're going to die and they're <laughs> going to wake up an angel or they're going to wake up a spirit and it doesn't happen. Okay. That's what they're talking about here. And that's what's been taught down through time. And it's not true. You don't wake up an angel. You, you never become an angel. That's a, that's a big point. You know, people think, you know, my daughter died and she, now she's an angel with God. No, she's not. She's a being just like she was on this planet. She reawakens when if she, she's under a certain age when you awaken and she continues her life just like she did here. Okay. Well, a lot of uh, people believe that your physical body is resurrected. Well, the whole Catholic Church has been trying to get people to keep, you know, to bury themselves for years and years. They have this belief that Jesus is coming back and he's going to resurrect the dead and all the bodies are going to come shooting out of the ground. Right. And into the air lie into the heavens right uh there was a whole book on that subject by the revelation revelation visualized back in the 70s i don't know if y'all mm -hmm. remember that but all these things are from the belief that the human body is resurrected and, it, and the catholic in the catholic uh pledge what does it say we believe in the resurrection of the body does it not am i wrong here <laughs> All right. So, and that does not happen. You don't need that body anymore. You get a new Marancha form. That body is dust, just like it came from the earth as dust, right? All right. So, and that's why they're talking about such beliefs are ignorant, superstition, and pleasing fables to make people feel all right about dying. And it shouldn't be nece a necessity to feel that way about dying because our actual thing that happens to us when we die is much grander than all mm -hmm. these fables and everything else right much grander all right 
Jane, would you take the next one? Okay. <clears throat> Always this Morantia transition intervenes between the mortal estate and the subsequent spirit status of serving human beings. Surviving. Oh, surviving human right. beings. This intermediate state of universe progress differs markedly in the various local creations, but in intent and purpose, they are all quite similar. The arrangement of dimension and higher Morontia worlds in Nebadon is fairly typical of the Morontia transition regimes in this part of Orvington. So each and every uh, local universe has their own process for bringing people from the finite to the Marancha, right? But they, they're saying this is pretty much the typical way it's done all the way through, all over the seventh super universe. Okay, so it might vary a little bit. So when you get up there and say, wait a minute, we didn't do it that way. That's okay, <laughs> right? <laughs> they had a way to do it. But they, but this is pretty much the typical way this happens over time. Uh, I guess I'll read since we have so few. Mm -hmm. The Marancha materials. The Marancha realms are the local universe liaison spheres between the material and the spiritual levels of creature existence. This Marancha life has been known on Urantia since the early days of the planetary prince. From time to time, this transaction state has been taught to mortals and the concept in distorted form has found a place in many present day religions. Mm. Now, if you go to the um, the Mormon church, they're going to talk about the Maharaj's beings, okay? Mm. Because they've been teaching it 200 years, okay? And it all is the downstepping of information that's been passed from the planetary prince age down to different societies. Okay, so the Maharaja concept has been out there, has been lost and re-lost, re-taught, lost and taught again, lost and taught again. So this concept of Maharaja has been there for since the beginning of time. It's just that certain aspects of the early church did, did not grasp hold of it. Okay, and that includes most of the stuff in the Bible. All right. Unless you read the Book of Enoch, you will never have heard of the Marantia state. Okay, I believe it's in the Book of Enoch. Okay, plus all the stuff that happened with the rebellion and all that, that's all out in the Book of Enoch too. You know, it's not exactly accurate, but it's out there. Okay, but the current Bible, the, the, the books that were canonized into the Old Testament, and the New Testament just skipped right over the Marantia state existence, probably with the exception of the resurrection of Jesus himself. Right? So. Uh, Roger. Yeah. <clears throat> Although the Catholics do teach about purgatory. Right. And I think that's about what they're trying to say. Yeah, yeah, in a sense, uh, the purgatory would be that. But the problem is this, I think it was around, don't quote me on this, between 13 and 1500, the whole concept of hellfire and brimstone was brought up through the Catholic <laughs> Church. One man did that, wrote the books and stuff. And that's where the whole hellfire and brimstone that everybody, if you didn't make it to the mansion world, you're going to burn to death, right? E through eternity. All right, it's not that kind of crazy, stupid thing. Lake of fire. Lake of fire, the whole nine yards. And that's and, Hades. Huh? That's Greek mythology. Hades. Yeah, Hades and all this stuff. All right, right. So, and that was not the case till later on. I, I think around the 1300 or 1500, it's one of the two that, that, that came out. It's been so long since I studied my Bible history. But anyway... The point was, there never was a hell. There isn't a hell. And if you don't survive, you don't wake up, right? That's just all there is to it. So there is no everlasting punishment. I don't care what anybody says. Um, unless you want to consider this world an everlasting punishment. That seems everlasting when you're living here. <laughs> Sometimes. 
Okay, so this concept of marancha has been been taught uh, over the years many times on and off, okay? And it's been lost on and off uh, many times. It's probably a lot like the whole concepts of, y'all know how crazy I am about ancient aliens, right? They get so many mm. things wrong. They get more wrong than they do right. But the concepts of what they're talking about are out there. It's in our history. It's in the history of our, you know, the things that happened a hundred thousand years ago are still in the history of the rock record. You know, the, the people bit, dig things up and that sort of thing. And it's the same way with the extraterrestrials. And all. I'm sure they've been visiting us two or three hundred thousand years at least. You know, so it's nothing is new under the sun, at least to God anyway. All right, uh, Diane, did you take the next one there? The Marantia spheres are the transition phases of mortal ascension through the progression worlds of the local universe. Only the seven worlds surrounding the finaliters sphere of the local systems are called mansion worlds, but all 56 of the system transition abodes in common with the higher spheres around the constellations and the universe headquarters are called Marantia worlds. These, crea these creations partake of the physical beauty and the Marantia grandeur of the local universe headquarters spheres. Okay, mm. why do you think they kind of reserve the first seven around the finaliter world as the mansion worlds, not just Marantia worlds? Because when Jesus hit, was here, what did he say? My father's world have many mansions. Remember that? Mm -hmm. Okay. So that's how they got dubbed the mansion worlds. And the reason being, it's those first seven worlds of progression that we have to go through to get rid of our animal tendencies. Mm -hmm. Okay. Okay. So if you wanted to, you could call these first seven worlds what? The removal of the animal worlds, right? Because that's what it does. It removes our bestiality tendencies. And we have to get through that part before we become what? A cosmic citizen on our, our system headquarters of Satania. Okay? So that's kind of why they they call them the mansion worlds. Now the worlds outside that are just called Marantia worlds because really they're Marantia training worlds in essence. Okay, where the first seven mansion worlds are removal of things worlds. Well, outside that, and all the worlds we go to after that are teaching worlds. They add things to us. Make <clears throat> sense. So it's a difference between the negative side and the positive side, okay? You're broken down and built back up. You're broken down and then you're given a whole new slate, clean slate, and they give all these wonderful things to you, okay? Hmm. All right, Rodney, would you take these? Yes. Uh, all of these worlds are architectural spheres and they have just double the number of elements of the evolved planets. Such ma made to order worlds not only abound in the heavy metals and crystals, having 100 physical elements, but likewise have exactly 100 forms of a unique energy organization called Marantia material. The master physical controllers and the Marantia power supervisors are able so to modify the revolutions of the primary units of matter and at the same time so to transform these associations of energy as to create this new substance. Okay, so all of these worlds have doubled the number of a normal planet. Okay, of elements. And it's the master physical controllers and the power supervisors that contain, controls the revolutions of the, these atoms or the vibration of the atom. They believe in string theory, it'd be the vibration of the atoms. 
And what these master physical controllers and power supervisors do is they use these hundred elements and modify them to vibrate at a certain frequency to create physical marancha material just exactly like the finite world has the same thing. It's got atoms and electrons and, and they vibrate at a certain thing that makes all the physical stuff on our planet right Correct. okay so you have to think of it it works the same way there's just double the number of energies and double the number of elements that they work with and so that's where the marancha material comes from okay <laughs> now let me give you a big secret all the marancha bodies guess what they're made out of the same stuff Okay. Really? So when you get to the get your new Marancha body, it's going to vibrate and it's going to work at a tune to that planet. You wake up on the same frequency of that planet. So these physical controllers, Marancha, Marancha power supervisors will make you a perfect body that vibrates and can be used with all the materials on that particular planet. Now, guess what happens when you leave the planet? You have to have a new tuned body for the new planet, right? So if it has a hundred on this planet and it, uh, elements on this planet, and it has a hundred and one on the next, then you got to be adjusted, right? Because you sort of like adjusting uh, the radio dial. On it's radio. like adjusting, the, yeah, the frequency of, of reality. Now you think about it this way. You know, try to bring all these things together that make sense to you. The finite world is a vibration on certain frequencies of a scale, and that's why we can see everything, right? Mm -hmm. Because it vibrates on a certain frequency. And the reason we feel our hands and our head and our wife and all that stuff is because it vibrates on the frequency of Earth or mm -hmm. Urantia, okay? So if a material controller, master physical controller came to this planet and changed the frequency of this planet, guess what happens? You know, yeah, it would turn the Disappears. Every, 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 yeah, you wouldn't be able to see anything, would you? No. All right. Well, guess what happens when a Marancha being comes to this planet to visit us? They can't see certain they things, can they? can't they? see, yeah. Yeah, they're not material like we're material. They're material in the Marancha form, but they're not material in the physical form or the finite form. So do you think we can see them? No, maybe. Um, mm -hmm. I mean, I don't know because uh, although maybe it was a different scenario, but Jesus was tweaked of, like for the first seven worlds oh wow. actually jesus it, was not it, yeah he was tweaked for the marancha form but he was not tweaked so that we could see him okay the physical controllers tweak correct. the eyesight of those people so they could observe him well, well the, what i meant though was maybe yeah. they did the same thing for him so he could see us because you know, right there at the end, he was uh, on the shore of the Lake of uh, Sea of Galilee, and there was a fire going. I think he had built the fire. I'm not. Yeah, he did. Yeah, for and the apostle. He actually uh, served. Uh, he served the Mark lad, the fish. Right. That's right. So he was able to control the matter, and he was at a higher. Marantia yeah. Okay, form. but you left one thing out, Rodney. What's that? He's a creator son. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> <laughs> he can do anything he wants to, right? <laughs> he controls all this. Yeah. <laughs> you know, it's, uh, yeah. that's is that what you call analyzing it to death? <laughs> yeah. Okay. Just wanted to point that out. <laughs> you know. Yeah, I missed that small. Still. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> okay, we're all on the same page. Okay, what I want to bring out, it's going to mention here in a slide coming up about how the 
there's a whole set of different control physical controllers okay for each each type of thing and one of the things it mentions is one of these controllers maintains its headquarters in the center of the planets all the planets are architectural spheres i have an outside but inside they're hollow okay? mm -hmm. but these controllers control it from inside the planet okay this is important because it makes it e easier for them to manipulate all the matter and all that stuff now keep in mind they talk to talk to us about we're only familiar with three types of energies okay there's 30 types of energies that these beings use to do all this so 27 of them we haven't even discovered yet on this planet okay so we got a long way to go where we understand everything if we ever <laughs> understand everything right <laughs> okay jane would you take the next one okay the early morontia life in the local systems is very much like that of your present material world becoming less physical and more truly Morontia on the constellation study world. And as you advance to, to the Salvington spheres, you increasingly attain spiritual levels. Okay, so just as the Morontia world is superimposed on the physical world, isn't it? So if we could see everything, we could probably drive around the country and we'd see Morontia temples all over this country. Okay where Marantia visitors come and, and, and that sort of thing. And probably the angelic core lives there and that sort of thing. Just like it, that is the case here, if we could go to the headquarters of Salvington or local universe, we would also notice that there are another dimension superimposing on the Marantia. And what would that be? The spiritual. Spiritual. Right. So as we go higher and higher throughout this process, we start to be tweaked so we can physically recognize what? The spiritual spiritual imposition on the Marantia. Mm -hmm. Make sense? So let me go one step further. If God the Father chose to, and he came in and put his little pinky on you, and said, I'm going to give you the ability to see the finite. I'm going to give you the ability to see the moral function. I'm going to give you the ability to see spiritual on this planet. What would you see? You would see all of this superimposition right here on the sphere we live on. I don't know if we'd be able to comprehend it. That's why he doesn't do it. <laughs> right? <laughs> You can give an ant a vision of a human, and he still is any not anything other than being an ant, is he? Mm -hmm. Right? And, and you know, Roger, I think about all this in such an extent, but to me, in reality, it's because uh, the Father wants to directly communicate with us, but we can't get on the same plane as frequency. We no, have to be perfect like he is before we actually have. We actually can embrace the Father's love. Yeah, who he is, right? So we can yeah. understand him. You know, an interesting part of this too, and it talks about uh, as we advance through Salvington, we increasingly attain spiritual levels. What is part of that? Part of that is the fusion with the adjuster. When we hit about the fifth mansion world and we fuse with the adjuster, then we're becoming what? More spiritual and more divine. And so as we do that, as we progress through these worlds, we recognize spiritual things and spiritual values more and more because of what? Because of the fusion with the adjuster. Mm -hmm. Right? Make sense? Yeah. It's almost ridiculously simple once you think through it. When you're trying to think through it, you go, well, I don't know what's going on here. You know? 
but the first time you read it in the book, you got, I don't know what you're talking about, you know, yeah. but that's, that's just the way it is. That's why you need people like our group and stuff to discuss these things. Mm -hmm. Think about what they're saying here. Think about what we're seeing. All right. And then once you realize what you're talking about, once you start to visualize what they're trying to teach us, then the light bulb comes on. You go, of course, it's got to be this way. You know, it's kind of like every time somebody reads the Urantia book and they come, you bring it back to you and say, I don't know if that's all the truth, but if it's not, it ought to be that way. Yeah. Okay. It's the truth. should be that way. All right. Okay, here we go. Sweetie, I'm going to let you read this. Because that's a lot of <laughs> okay. The Marantia Power Supervisors are able to affect a union of material and of spiritual energies, thereby organizing the Marantia form of materialization, which is receptive to the superimposition of a controlling spirit. When you traverse the Marantia life of Nebadon, these same patient and skillful Marantia power supervisors will successfully provide you with 570 Marantia bodies each one a, a phase of your progressive transformation. From the time of leaving the material worlds until you are constituted a first stage spirit on Salvington, you will undergo just 570 separate and ascending Morancha changes. Eight of these occur in the system, 71 in the constellation, and 491 during the sojourn on the spheres of Salvington. So you are tweaked 570 times altogether, right? From the time you leave this planet till the time you uh, uh, arrive on Sellington or are already become a first stage spirit. Okay. That's a lot of changes over time. Changes, yeah. Right. To go with the flow. Go with the flow, <laughs> right? Now I'll read this one since it's shorter and then the next person. In the days of the mortal flesh, the divine spirit indwells you. Well, what's the divine spirit? The spirit of the Father, the thought adjuster. The thought adjuster. That's the divine spirit, right? Now you have, you also have the what? The infinite spirit, which is part of you too, certain when you, which you're circuited to. And then okay. you also have Roger. Yeah. What I, I've read the Jesus papers to my mother I don't know, maybe 16 times. Yeah. And we were reading the farewell uh, discourse and admonitions and uh -huh. at the at the Last Supper. And, and you know, you can read it that many times, but then all of a sudden you read something and it makes, you didn't Perfect realize. Perfect sense. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, I did not realize that the spirit of truth, I, I know that it is. Jesus, his spirit, right, with us, that it's a comforter, uh, that it illuminates uh, the difference between good and bad mm -hmm. for us, and that it's a helper, but the spirit is also a guide. Right. Now, I knew this, but what I didn't realize is that his spirit will guide us not only to him, yeah. But all the way until we, to the Father. To the Father, yeah. because it's uh, it's also the spirit of the Son, right? The original <laughs> Son, right? The It originates at the spirit, the infinite spirit of uh, the, uh, the eternal Son, right? It originates in at the eternal Son, and that's how it becomes the circuit of the creator son. Oh, no wonder it takes us all the way in. Yes. Okay. All right. So that makes sense, right? So when when you think of it this way, when Jesus brought the comforter or the spirit of truth to the planet on Pentecost, he opened the pathway from the eternal son in paradise all the way down to the earth. Okay? Because he he's in circuited in that circuit, you know. There's a lot connected a wire. It's like connecting a wire. That's right. 
Yeah. It, but it, it originates it, in the eternal sign, right? Another interesting part of that is this. That is our connection to all spirit reality. Ooh. Think of it that way. Because everything that is spirit originates from the sun, the eternal sun. Mm -hmm. Correct. Okay. Which is, if you think about it, it's different than Maracha. Correct. It's part of the Maracha. It's the Maracha is part of it, but it's different, right? Because when you become a first stage spirit, you step out of what reality? Maracha. Maracha. That's right. That's right. And and then Roger, um, with him, there is the universal mother spirit. The mother spirit is with him all the way. Right. You know, in her spirit, you remember her connection? The infinite spirit connects through her, and that's where the Holy Spirit comes from, right? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So that Holy Spirit is the direct connection through the local universe, mother spirit, and the infinite spirit. But not only that, that there, we miss something big if we don't mention this. The seven adjutant mind spirits come from the infinite spirit too, mm -hmm. through the local universe mm -hmm. mother spirit. And those seven adjutants changes to what when you become a first stage spirit? Cosmic mind. It becomes the cosmic mind. It all comes together, doesn't it? See how it all makes sense? Mm hmm you see why you have to study these things in essence separately to understand the whole, you know? It's kind of like math mathematics. You have to learn two plus two b before you learn uh, how to write a formula like E equals MC square, right? A hundred thousand piece puzzle together. Yes, it is. <laughs> it is when you get the whole picture, Guess what you become? Enlightened. Yeah. Right? People talk about enlightenment like you can buy it on a on a, on a uh, um, at the Walmart or something. You can't. Enlightenment takes work. It takes time. It takes consistency. It takes a lot of work to understand all the parts to bring something together. Okay? Yeah. Any way you look at it. And the funny thing is, it's like your puzzle, Rodney. If you're missing a piece, what happens? You don't sure. see the whole picture. Yeah. Sure. You don't see the whole picture. You know, people, you know, I still have people ask me, how do you, how do you just read these paragraphs and bring this stuff out? And I said, well, I've read them over and over and over and again, and I've made the connections between something in this paragraph and something at the beginning of the book, which also connects to something at the end of the book. Okay? You have to bring all the parts together, and then when you read this, you go, oh, it makes perfect sense. Unless you're some genius doctor in you know, philosophy at some university who says, this, this is gobbledygook, it doesn't make any sense, because he doesn't know how to understand it. Right? And it happens all the time. Right? The smartest people in our world are some of the dumbest people in our world, unfortunately. Well, well. And then sometimes some of the dumbest people in our world are the smartest people. You know? right. Every time I listen to Eric Victor Hansen, is that him? That's the most brilliant man I've he ever brilliant. heard brilliant. talk. I don't know if you've ever read the Urantia book. He's a historian of California. But the man is, you know, I listen to, I see him on videos and I go, how does he know this much? You know, I mean, he's just amazing. But it's the same principle. He's taken his time and his effort and he studied these things and he's put A plus B to make C and he's put the picture together, you know. And it's, it's work, but the result is just astounding, you know, what comes right down to it. Okay, so let's move on. Uh, I think I just read this one, didn't I, dear? Yeah. Okay, so Rodney, you're back up again. Okay. Um, Paul learned of the existence of the Marantia worlds and of the reality of Marantia materials. For he wrote, 
they have in the they have in heaven a better and more enduring substance. And these mirage materials are real, literal, even as in the city which has foundations, whose builder and maker is God. And each of these marvelous spheres is a better country, that is, a heavenly one. Mansion worlds, that's where the concept of heaven came from, okay? Got nothing to do with clouds, floating around the clouds with a harp or anything like mm -hmm. that, right? It's the splendoredness of each and every world of the Marancha world, right? The more abundant existence. The abundant existence, that's right. Okay, what are we doing? Oh, we're about out of time. I think I better quit there then. Yeah, this is a this has got a lot of this is a long paper. I've got 150 slides all together on this. Mm -hmm. So we're gonna be working on this for a while. Now, next Good. Tuesday I will be in a sling. So I won't be able to talk because I can only use one arm unless I keep slapping myself, you know. <laughs> That's Tuesday. That's Tuesday. So we'll take this back up. Thursday, we're gonna uh, keep working on our thought adjuster papers. We might finish that paper, I'm not sure. But uh Thursday, I may cut us off short and not put the paper actually on the video until maybe over the weekend because I have to get up very early in the morning to be at the hospital. So, for the surgery. So, we, when we get done, I'm going to shut it down. It may not be online for a couple of days, but it will get out there as soon as I can get it out there. And the same way with this one, this one I'll put on in the morning because I'm a tired puppy tonight. For some reason. Mm -hmm. Okay, let me stop the share. And let's have a little prayer for tonight. Um, Rodney's kind of stopped up. Jane, would you like to close us in prayer tonight? Sure. <clears throat> um, beloved God, we give you thanks for all that you have made possible for us to learn, to get to know you better. And you have provided us with Roger to teach, to explain. And we thank you for one another. We thank you for every person that ever, ever attended any of these studies. May we always surrender to your will and may we uh, learn to live in peace with one another. And we ask this in the name of Jesus because he is our God. Amen. Amen. And thank you all for coming, joining us from all the different platforms for home, at home, for sure. Um, and I think we got we got Facebook back this week, so it's out there on Facebook immediately this time, so that's that's always good. You know. And uh, let's see here. So let me stop the... Uh, Already stopped the share. Let me find the record thing here. I can't find it on this. Oh, here we are. Stop recording. Yes. It's good. Stop. Uh, okay. Did I get them all? I think so. <laughs> nope. I know you were. Huh? You are having a problem 